It's really quite good. And the Witch Doctor will be their final selection. Just want to keep the Drone Ranger up. Not a bad ultimate. And pretty good lane control. <laughs> How did this guy get through to the fifth? How does he ever get through to the fifth? He's so powerful. So powerful is Terra Blade. I'm three for three on my Terra Blade casting. I've cast three games of Terra Blade, and every single one he has won. Every single one. So let's get into it and we'll see how We'll see how Terra Blades get a fair in this. Now if this now just means they go a safe flame. That's an easy pull. They could actually run Skyrise and Prophet on the off lane, leave Ogamajai pulling and then a Terra Blade up on the top lane, up against Ice Mike eighty eight. Ice Mike eighty eight is gonna die with that case. I really I, I actually kinda of wanna see Five a bit of a change seconds. up in that. Remaining. Put the centaur to the bottom lane. Just give him one like a witch doctor for some help. Switch the lanes up if you can. Uh, looks like they're gonna go pretty well standard. Mike moving north. Drury's moving south. What is that headpiece? The Sentinel Hood. Oh, hello. Thursday evening Cup Series! Oh, how American! How American. Very nice. Very nice, oosh. I check out your- I check out your swag, man. That's- I, that's- that's some pretty boy swag right there. No. Defensive board up by Mihawk. Primarily just so he doesn't get ganked up from this side. This allows him to basically walk to roughly about here in the lane. But more importantly, it lets him see the rune on the bottom. While up on top, it will actually be a safe lane Terror Blade. Very early observer ward up here, so... I think Mike 88 knows exactly what he's up against. Are they switching at all? To battle. TC's moving up. It might actually be even a better choice, putting TC up against the Terror Blade. You know he's kind of, well, up against the Invoker, it can go both ways. It's kind of depends who gets the extra help from the rotating supports. And Flubber stuff leaves a nice aggressive ward inside the lane too, so they'll be watching Mihawk rather closely. Well, these first runes, so who gets the, who gets the bonus advantage, apart from obviously Bounty will be there. So it's Nimbus rune to Masoku. Invisibility. His Skywrath Mage might be able to help uh, just tip the tides of the battle here in middle lane. TC's failed the block. Ended up losing one. So Smash will have the high ground advantage early on. Be a bit of an aggro pull to try and get it back from uh, TC. But Smash will still be very happy with this. And of course TC actually needs to be able to see Smash before it can aggro pull him back. So, well, it right, gets close and already just starts beating into Smash, moves up to the high ground himself. And this is what I do like about like TC's Viper. Denied. He can just get so over aggressive up against the Invoker, especially you when you realize that you're going up against like a like a, an Exhort first, which is gonna happen anyway, you're never gonna go Quas first. But with Nether Toxin from the Viper, you're able just to beat into this Invoker and burn out all, all of his consumables. And that's the primary goal right now from TC. Put Smash as low as he possibly can. Because he also has to build himself into his own bottle, so CS is critical. But he wants this Invoker zoned out. It's like Whitebeard's already up to level 2 on this off lane, fluff the stuff. Man is helping him with a pull, and Mihawk. Oh, we saw NOT do this yesterday. Well, it's a little bit different though, because they're trying to use a Skywrath Mage to do it. But they're going to use an Aegis Prophet now on Mihawk. Just to farm up the Ancients. Any range hero can really do this, just... Pull them around the sides, you'll, you'll munch through a couple of trees to do it. But you're still able to find yourself a level 2 in a not too horrendous time frame. Well, the thing is that tree actually helped them do the pull right now. Keeps the screen wave being fully denied. And a lot of experience points coming into Oosh. So now 10 to 1 on the CS board. Keeping the lane nicely throttled. Mihawk just got the big ancient granite gold left. Ix Mike 88 at least got his pull over, and that's with that's with the the stack. So because of that, one creep's gonna move up and keep keep the dire creep wave at bay. But the rest of this creep wave is gonna get denied up. So Terra not gonna get all the experience he was searching for from this. And in fact, Centaur's gonna gonna crack level three because of this too. 
Now, finally, the creep wave comes in range of the bottom tower. Miyork will lose his clarity, but he's going to grab level 3, so that's more important for him. Actually, no, he's not. He's going to fall a little bit short. Oh, no, he's up. There's a new creep wave on the way in. So, the throttling and control, it finally ended from Sneaky Nick's Assassins. And they just probably can find himself some nice experience points. Already got his boots, so it's difficult to catch him out of position. And you're seeing already Ike's Mike 88. The second that Metamorphosis kicks in, he just backs up from Terror Blade. He does not want to battle this guy. Alright, look at him. Who would ever want to battle that? That's so freaking scary, man. Middle lane's probably getting scarier for TC. It's already got his Ring of Aquila up and running. So this game's not going to be the easiest in the world, but then Stun, Sunstrike, Call Snaps, Meteorites, everything they've got, they throw into TC. The Paralyzing Cast will bounce in, but even Mihawk, he TP'd himself in that all damage will not be enough to kill off Luff and stuff. They commit four heroes to ensure the kill on the Viper. And they're fully successful. Smash did burn through a lot for that. It wasn't even actually the Cold Snap. They did throw everything they had for that. He actually ended up going for, uh, because the reason why it's not Cold Snap is because there's no points up in course. He went one Wex and Four two Exot. Over on this Invoker. I'm giving the alacrity bonus for now inside the lane. I don't think uh, TC was really expecting that much damage to come out from Smash. Not that early on. Yeah, see it right there, because without without the Wex point, he would never have the Chaos Meteor either. I'll dig that. Now even move up, pick up an Illusion Rune for himself. Oh, the Witch Doctor will take the Bouncy Rune in the bottom lane. And what are you really getting in return? Show your Drow Ranger's getting some good farm. I'm actually still waiting for the Drow Ranger as well as Terra Blade combo to work. If you could just run it like Artizi does with the Drow Ranger in the mid. And then run the Terra Blade in the safe lane. Or we'll switch it around either way, don't really care. Alright, that's gonna be one powerhouse of a Terra Blade. But now Mihawk's gonna try and stand his ground in the bottom lane. His trees is getting farmed up by Flop as well as Wyatt but kept in the vision. He's already had the observed one for it. Ush. That's three levels up in the Cold Arrows. It's arrows. a lot of slow as well. He'll spread himself up. They have to cut free, but now in comes Mystico. He'll throw the Ignite over. There's still some tree inside. He's a Sunstrike. If he moves forward, it's going to hit with an orb shot. The attack through the tree line. There's trying to be some help, and they've got it. Mystico's in, and that's going to be the death there of the Dro Ranger. Sneaky Nick's Assassin's in a lot of trouble. And Mystico, he couldn't get the secondary Ignite off. Two for zero in favor of NOT. They kill off the safe lane Dro Ranger, and Terra Blade's gonna go to town up on this top lane. There's Terra Blade and Terra Blade to push out against this T1 tower, dishing out over 140 damage with every swipe. And Ike's Mike 88 even using a double edge on the front of that. Radiance bottom Good luck. Metamorphosis is about to run out for him though, but he's still got himself one range illusion. Does some easy damage into the tower, and he's back into his normal self. And that tower is still some chip damage, down to 500 life points five minutes in. Screw DKs in the future, Terror Blade is the future. Now six minute runes, gonna be a bounty rune. DC, the Ignite to start with, the Meteorite being dropped down as well, they got so much burn damage into TC. He just can't survive up against this. So a second death to his name, 3-0 to zero in favor of NOT. They push their advantage now above 1,000 in the gold. And you experience a little bit up for, for the Sneaky Nicks Assassins, because they'll be just doing a better job for their pull points. But the rotation from the heroes is, is so much better. Point boost will arrive now for Whitebeard. They are on their way to getting that combination up with the Dro Ranger. She does have a level 6 as well, which means this T1 tower's... Uh, well, minutes are numbered. I'll say days, but you're not going to get through days on this. But well, there's a lot of movement coming up to top. Mr. Ko and Masoku. Samoa's going to break. They'll see Fluffer stuff. Or at least know the Fluffer stuff's in pretty close. I don't think they actually have vision down that far. No, they don't. So they just back it up. Not going to take a risk with a, with a ballsy dive behind the tower. If it was just one hero up there, it would have been a lot easier. But with no meta... Uh, yeah, with no, meta meta with no metamorphosis over on Iowa. There's just no reason to, to risk it. No. He's got it up at the moment, they can go later. 
It's just a little bit of a waste of time for the for the rotation. Mihawks back to farming up ancients. Almost up at level six now on this ancient profit for seven minutes in. The start game is actually quite easy to exploit this way. And there she goes, level six is up, so Wrath of Nature, bonus damage. Smash can find that opening in the mid. He's got his Color Snap now available because he's got one point over in the Quas. Going for a very split build, and they're doing a jump up. It's on the Terra Blade. Big initiation, fluff and stuff. Trying to bring him down, but the damage isn't enough. The Wrath of Nature kicks through. Oh, this is disastrous. The Drone will be able to still get the kill on the Terra Blade, but the Sun Strike, the targeting is perfect from Smash. He picks up the kill from the mid. He'll pick up a regeneration rune as well. And while NOT, they do get the advantage from that one. They still did give a lot over to the Drone Ranger with 760 experience and 165 gold, but she died, so she lost a lot of it too. That's ah, not that great. NOT are still light years ahead. <laughs> with a three for one trade off, they're happy as Larry. <coughs> they're getting more and more momentum. The Visage is trying to do the same kind of thing in the bottom lane. They might consider triggering that Drow Aura right now. In fact, uh, well, they're holding on to it for Mihawk. A lot of damage with the Grave Chill. Soul Assumption damage. If that Drow Aura already went, then Mihawk is dead right now. Trying to battle inside the tree lines. He's almost got one of the Familiars down, the but not fast enough. You got the drop in a moment. But the revenge does kick in, so Whitebeard. Able to just taste that sweet, sweet revenge. And also, taste 1500 gold away from having his axe. So good money in for him. Top lane push is going to come again. This time the tier 1 tower will drop. I mean, I've made him all for this, but they don't really need it right now. There's no way Sneaky Nix Assassins want to try and fight that. And said so that would love to have a crack at mid, but these Observer Wards are already down right now. So the second they're trying to initiate on Smash, you'll see it coming. They actually get the bottom lane instead of NOT. Catching out Whitebeard, the Sun Strike just going to hold him there for the Invoker Sun Strike to connect. Familiars. No drop down, but not enough damage coming out from Mihawk to get the hit. And there goes your tier 1 tower as well. So a tier 1 tower as well as the death of the Visage. An easy day's work for NOT. They are really making, seem, making the scene like, very, very easy. Smash back up to that high ground. What's he got? He's hand of minus now, just before the 10 minute mark. Double this is already damage. with a Terra Blade, who has drums, treads, Ring of Aquila 10 minutes in too. I hate to say it, but this game is looking over and over as time is progressing. And Dread Ranger is at least finding some extra bonuses here, but... Having a Wraith Band, Ring of Aquila, as well as Power Treads this early on... That's not really the advantage you want to write home about, especially when there's a lot of experience going begging on the bottom lane. She didn't get a Midas yet, she went for a Morbid Mask instead, and now Mystico, gotta look for the stun. They use the center ulti, but the stun still connects. Mystic Flare, she has a little bit more time to run away. The Orb Attack will fly in, but... The center ulti being used in a defensive nature. The Droid getting forced back out of the jungle. While Terra Blade continues just to control up top, up to 5,000 net worth now on this guy. And with the full Midas over on Smash, can also be bumping up Shots into levels as well as up. money. He's actually left just that one point up in Wex for now. Enjoyed the Meteorite while he had it. It looks like Masoku's trying to get a little bit more space in the spawn lane. Once he picks up, I think you have double Arcane Boots. All the mana in the world. Just to keep spamming out all of the harassment. Looks like Centaur. Just doing damage to himself with his double edges. Ix Mike 88 desperately trying to get to that blink dagger on him. Denied. Masoku and uh, Mystico. They're still waiting for that opening, but no one's giving it to him. The Drone Ranger is not coming back. Like, Ush is now farming up Ancients instead. The only way he feels he can get himself ahead of the ahead of the curb. This will allow him to buy up the the Mask of Madness. And in fact, that is exactly what he's purchasing. Fortunately for him, the Curry just made a trip up for Fluff and stuff. Bringing a new set of wards as well as smoke. So he doesn't have it just yet. TC's back into his farming in the middle lane. Getting closer and closer to having that full mech done. In fact, I say closer, he actually has the full mech done. We'll see if it will be enough for him. It's a quick bounty room for TC. 
The bottom illusion room was already taken by the Invoker. Alright, so there's your Mask of Madness. Back to farming up on the top lane, white beard. Gonna try and defend that bottom lane, but you see Mystico just how aggressively is he moving forward. They have Observer Wars there looking for it. Mihawk throws out his ultimate, holds white bit in position. They get the seal and the Mystic Flare. But at the same time, Mihawk, not having the easiest time in the world. And then again, neither does Fluff. 1500, that all, ah, 20 life points he went down to a one point. The Voodoo Restoration kept him alive. The T1 tower is slowly being whittled away. Arcane Boots from just the Ogre Magi, giving a little bit more back over to the Skywrath. Uh, Blink Dagger has arrived for the Centaur, but Ice Mike 88 needs to heal up before he can use it. It's like up on top lane. Push. Man, use Trigger Mask of Madness underneath the Terra Blade that's dishing out over 200 damage a pop. That's death right there. Smash slowing down TC. He was looking for the Prophet to TP in to help him out. Mihawk actually ended up holding off on that. It was about to, but just stopped. Buys his treads instead. They're still waiting for just an easy hit on bottom lane. Fortunately for the Ogre Magi, you can't really do much about these uh, familiars. Radiant's top tower at the same is time, he doesn't really care about it. While well, Dro Range is down, sure, she got the four points up. It's a 4-1-4-1 it's a four, one, four, one build. But you don't really care while she's dead, because then the familiar's bonus damage just really isn't there. Radiant's bottom tower and really, it's not anyway, because you don't have any like massive agility buff up. Uh, that bonus damage increase that TC's now getting right now is 43. Like, that's okay. Like, I'm not, I'm not going to shrug off 43 damage. But at the same time, it's not that powerhouse you're going to get scared Radiant's of compared to the potential getting multicast fallen. and Mystic Flag down. The TP back in towards middle lane. There's no way NOT have to give up their tier 1 towers. They're the ones who have full control of this game. They're up by 4,000 in the net worth, 3,000 in the experience. This Terra Blade is a beast. Now with a Yashir on him as well. They're looking at bottom lane, Ix Mike. Blink, hoof stop, and then just death ward. Easiest way to ensure the kill. Sunstrike's looking for a pick off of love and stuff. Well, how many points up an Exo? Okay, that's a lot. 350 damage. It wouldn't have been enough to kill off Fluff, though. He had enough life points. That's still a good pick up on the Ogre Magi. When the Drow Range is finally finding her space up on the top lane, hits a level 2 ultimate. Which is kind of why the, uh, the uh, damage increase is a lot higher right now for the Viper at 46 points. I'm still going to laugh if the Drow and Visage combo is enough to bring down Terra Blade. So some Tranquil Boots coming in for the Witch Doctor. Trying to keep him on the front lines, but there's just no amount of regeneration coming in for Fluff and stuff. Which is also a flag too, I didn't actually do this before. The fact that the Whitebeard is the man taking up that Visage roll, as opposed to Fluff. So no extra micro control from Fluff in this game. Necro units can be the purchase up by Smash. Allowed the push, but probably more importantly, getting rid of that mana pool. Especially on the Centaur, if you can do that before the engagement. Take away either the Hoof Stomp or that uh, Stampede right now. Hoof Stomp connects over on the Invoker. He's got three points over on the x but he'll go in this. So quick from Smash. At the same time, Flopperstock got damaged down by Mystico. They use Mystic Flare as well. The three are hovering around now. Ice Mike 88, they seal him up. And double multicast from Mystico. The Sprout from Meorg is keeping TC out of this fight for the moment too. He's looking for more of the Sunstrike. A little bit of target. TC goes on the lower part of the ground. And Smash, he's got an invoke possible. He's looking for a call snap. But he needs to keep his distance. The Soul Assumption damage will bring down finally the invoke and the Gulf's coming in from Ush. Looking to fight the Mech Charge from Whitebeard will keep his teammates alive. And Mihawk! Too much damage, and even Ush, look at the deeps! He misses up hill, but he doesn't miss that one. Not with the Soul Assumption damage as well. He's a double kill over to Whitebeard. And they'll bring down this tier 1 tower, and NOT though, looking good until then. And they gave away a lot. They gained no experience. They lose gold. They gave gold away. To a rather large amount too. For the three hero deaths. Of course, that's not actually including the death of uh, well, Fluff and stuff early on. So they did get something back from that. Now you're able to afford a Blink Dagger over on the Dread Ranger and the full Aghanim Scepter is completed for the, for, uh, the Visage. And this is still 17 minutes in and you have a level 2 set of familiars with the Aghanim's upgrade. And they're actually summoned too. So it's not even waiting for this. And a Drow Ranger sitting at level 12. With a lot of ability to just chase and also escape. So you put all this together. 
And you're looking at a solid lineup coming up here from Sneaky Nicks Assassins. And the advantage, they just gained it all back on the experience. And the gold change obviously will also kick back up again with the experience advantage that NOT had and how one side of that engagement was. It's rough. But the Terror Blade is still very, very big. He can actually buy his entire mana style right now, too. But it's not enough fly points to survive. The Drow Ranger's DPS is still insanely high. And when you add a Viper in towards the mix, the Terror Blade can't run. You can have a whole bunch of himself, but if you can isolate the correct target, Terror Blade will go down. It's like bottom lane, Death Ward again from Fluffersnuff. They get another kill over on Mystico. Ogumashai dying, not the same way, because last time around it was, uh, it was the Centaur, it was IX Mike 88 initiating, but they're, they're saving him for the top lane while Drow Ranger brings down the tower. And they just profit all he does finally bounce up to Oosh. They take some extra Radiant damage. If you're teeping in towards the mid, there's a lot of Terror Blade coming in, but the bouncing cast can slow him down. The Centaur ulti, they're looking for actually the hit. The Hawk stopped too far away from Mike's Mike 88. He comes in, the Cold Snap's keeping him at bay. The familiars are rotating in from the sides, but NOT having not a bar of it, they're backed up completely. Back to almost their tier 2 tower. Like Terror Blade's running back to base, he's got no mana left. And just Prophet will get rid of that tier 1 tower in the bottom lane, but... Picks up a Maelstrom for it. A lucky find. They're just losing map control now. Which is the worst thing you could have when you're going up against such a lineup like Dro Ranger and, and the Visage. Because they will start just chipping away at your tier twos. Restricting your movement, restricting restricting your advantage. And TC up to 2.7k gold. Should be the point booster being purchased. Yeah, it is. So the 1500 and that Aghanim Scepter is going to arrive. At the same time, we do still have the Necro units on the way from Smash. It's only a level 1. Obviously, that death kind of set him back a little bit. But he's definitely not nerfed by any stretch of the imagination. They're falling behind, no doubt. But... That's still a lot to work with with, with NOT's lineup. All stuff being built by the Ogre Magi, too. <laughs> Familiars are taking away Terrorblade's farm. Get really frustrated with this at the end of the day. I stopped saying that too, that'll be really helpful. Alright, TC. Back to middle lane. Got more help. He's got a lot more attack coming at him. And now TP in the center only with TC can't break free. Throws the Oli at Mihawk. A lot of bowling cards, but YP comes in. Saw such a damage and the familiars are attacking directly at the Ogre Majai with the dead wall from Fluffers off almost a full duration. The familiars is a little bit too far away. Finally they get the drop downs done from Whitebeard to get the kill. Smash will come back up in a moment. But the Dro stays alive. She triggered her aura for that one too. That's why the familiars did so much damage during the engagement. So it's a three for two trade-off. Pretty well split as far as the advantage goes, however. But the Terra Blade didn't die, which is probably the more critical thing for an NOT. Obviously, they prefer, like, with the Evoker to live too, which they got both of that. Profit dying, but hey, he's a sacrificial lamb anyway. He'll get his money back when he starts doing the split pushing. Well, the fact that Dro Raider was also capable of setting through that, through that fight. Radiant structures are fortified. Probably almost a bigger problem for him. That BKB is getting closer Radiant's and closer. Tower has fallen. Oh, terrible, I guess take a mid, mid tower. As uh, Ush continues to farm up on the bottom lane, Masoku wants to jump him, but he has no way to do so. Second he throws a concussion shot, then Dro just blinks herself away. In the meantime, she keeps getting more and more money, getting closer and closer to that BKB, and probably more importantly, closer to level 16. And that's when we, when we rack up the damage output once again. And TC will be a very, very happy chappy. Smash does have his level 2 necro units now. What we got coming out in the curry? An ultimate orb. So the Scardi is starting up. A lot of life points with 1600 to get through, but even with 26 armor and 1600 life points, I don't think Drow Range is going to have a major problem with this. We've got Usha's BKB recipe flying up north. It's bringing the force off over, over to IX Mike 88. Better way to initiate in. And also potential to survive after he does initiate. How's TC looking? Might be a little bit annoyed that Drow just took one of his last hits just then. 
Now Saul going in for the greater BKB, but then again, he's already got that, so maybe for a greater TP scroll. <laughs> they will have the extra item slot. And what's coming out? Yep, 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 yep. Is the uh, TP scroll. Oh, I always just hovering around. It's like for Visage. They're waiting for the familiars. And White Beard would just resummon them up right now. Opening, Mr. Coke going for the whoosh. And then he triggers the BKB. They've lost the Ogre Majai and Mihawk. He came in a long way. They need a stun. The Gust Back does not offer a stun. There's only a knockback. So again, the Ogre Majai finding himself on the end of the death. It's now his fourth death to the name of the Ogre Majai. Radiance Middle Tower is under attack. He's actually worse off than the Dro Ranger right now. <laughs> but Dro's able to farm up so much inside the jungle, I don't think she really cares. She's sitting at the second highest net worth. The Terror Blade Scarting is obviously going to cause some major problems. It might even cause more problems. This this Invoker should probably be the one to take the Agassi model. The Terror Blade is, I'm not going to say unkillable, but at this point in the game, keeping that Invoker alive is probably going to be more beneficial now. But Masoku just steals up over on Ush, but the damage output is still enough. They come out, Roshan's killed. And the Agassi more the dude actually still put into the Terror Blade. It will allow him to actually buy out his item. Because he is getting very close to having that Scardi up and running. And he wants to make sure he still has buyback available. And if he can't have that, then the Aegis Immortal is your second de second best option. But really, Sneakinix is ass since they need a they need a proper way to deal with him. Because he, uh, he didn't go a BKB, you can use things like your Scythe of Ice. But just a direct attack. They just need to get the stuns off. So I think Mike 88 is probably going to be the most critical thing here. And that's a fake one. They're looking for the real one, but they'll find Mihawk. Ush jumps up. The Sprout will come, but the Familiars are easily going to have enough damage to kill him. And now Masoku. Ike's Mike's right behind. The Mystic Flare will go. And he's, Mike's trying to keep his distance, and he'll be able to do so. The familiar drop down, Ush comes in point blank range at him, he's actually on the other side of the tree line. Maybe not realizing it, Ogum is shy. Getting a nice little combo over on TC, but with one charge, it's not to mention he's got the Aghanim Scepter up and running. Got a lot of life points to fight with, Whitebeard, another multicast. Sunstrike a little bit off target, now in comes Ush, smash, too much damage! The buyback did come out from the Nature's Prop, but trying to fight again. Mystico able to get himself back in range of the tower, TC TPing out, the familiars, ah there's the stun. They'll bring down TC, he'll get one last Viper Strike, but the Familiar's gonna come in and try and get the Snipe. The Thunder! Whoa, 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 Terror Blade! The drops come! He's so low on life! The Familiar's will come back to the world of the living. They made this attack directly into me! Oh. <laughs> whoa, whoa, whoa! You do not have the power to fight that! <laughs> he might have thought he was safe because the Draw Aura was already used. <laughs> but it works for 30 seconds. So it was already up. And the damage output was just way too much. The Terror Blade trying to save his teammate, but he loses to Nature's Prophet again. Free gold. Free, free gold. And Whitebeard is now going to be the man to buy the Assault Curious for his team. But you did still get a lot of experience and gold coming into the Terror Blade for that fight. Didn't lose the Aegis, the Immortal. He's 5 for 1 on this Terror Blade. Looking to actually push in a little bit more, but these familiars, they're making life so difficult. There's only one right now, actually, inside the... Oh, the one? Two. Inside the jungle, farming him up. Is there a ranger? Give it not a second. Oh, calling out, they had a sentry ward down, but the smoke gank from NOT, I wasn't expecting that to work. I just wasn't keeping tabs on where the drone ranger was moving to. A little regeneration room for Smash. I think he might be realizing just how vulnerable he is with only 1400 life points and 5 armor. That Drow Ranger just carves him in two. Radiance now Mordekast over into a Terror Blade. Let him beat the crap out of these towers. Buff him up. And this tower will not survive. Radiant's bottom tower so what else is fallen. coming out in this courier? That 4 star finally arriving. Man, Fluffer stuff, trying to keep him out. The bouncing paralyzing car is going to keep him off for the moment. The Sun Strike looking to do some early chip damage onto the, onto the uh, Viper. He does come in. Whoa, TZ! Too much damage on him. The Familiars do get summoned up to try and battle back the Terror Blade. Not really effective at the moment. He still has uh, his Thunder available too. 
They stunning him up and slowing him down, but remember, he's still got this Aegis to the Immortal available. The Witch Doctor Aldi is pushing in OT back for the moment. But the Necro units are right in the back of Fluff and stuff. And now Ush, the damage into Smash, he's got enough to bring him down, but he might lose no life points for this. I say might, it's a guarantee. This Terror Blade is a beast. The Forward Spirits are ticking down Mike, a force up up to the high grounds. 87 life points, but now Ush is also getting stunned up. Back up to the high ground, but the Rax is gone. They can't take more because the tier 2 towers are still up. Well, there's just too much damage, Mike. Careful. They're coming in. I think it was just actually looking for that Sunder to swap with the Dro Ranger. And then Okamashai just needed to get one quick stun in. And he had him. The stun was on cooldown, though, so he, I don't know what he was really going to try and achieve. But either way, NOT proving the power of the Terror Blade, showing the reason why Navi US lost to him in the first game tonight. And more mine. bounty runes to be claimed. 4.2k gold over into a Terror Blade. Won't be long before that butterfly is up and running on him. And then this throw range is going to have a lot more problems, especially when you're building into a Crystallis. And that'll let you get some quick damage out into, into heroes like Invoker or Skywrath. Oh, good four stuff. Yeah, but what it won't allow you to do is hit directly into the Terror Blade once he has the butterfly. Might even be worth just picking up the Talisman of Evasion right now for the Terror Blade. And it is the standard item build for a Terror Blade, and he's actually going to go BKB. Interesting. Considering Viper Strike as well as Horse Time, don't really care about BKB. And the Witch Doctor Aldi is also physical DPS. And when the Familiars attack, that's also physical DPS. And when Draw attacks, is also physical DPS. Hmm. So it's not really stopping that much damage apart from Soul Assumption and the Slow Effect and the Paralyzing Cusk. He at least can't be attacked by poison attack. <laughs> Back into our farming time now. The Witch Doctor still trying to build into that big Aghanim Scepter upgrade. If he gets it, it's going to be so big for him. So no T pushing up towards that high ground, especially with all those illusions. They're going to have very little to no effect. And you know, TC's going to take the hit just for the farm. Or trying to at least. Familiar is the ones on the. Oh! Almost lost one. And he just instantly resummons. Trying to slow down this push, but they're going to be pretty adamant about pushing down this lane. There's no Necro units. And Ice Mike 88, well, he was hiding in the trees for a moment, then repositions himself and instantly shows himself. But the trees will be summoned, they also scout out the familiars on the side. Tower's being just chipped down by the Forest Spirits. Now in comes the Terror Blade. Look at the damage into TC, not to mention the slow. The TC was considering a denial, but it took too long to attack. And now, all stop, they need this Terror Blade down before he gets the BKB up and running. He'll get the split up and then Sanders on the wide beard. The damage gets returned. And we're going to see Sneaky Nick's Assassin's just evaporate their team. TC can't even TP out in time. Ice Mike 88 and Drone Ranger might survive, but the army of the damned is pushing up through the top. And GG. 30 minutes is all this 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 game took. NOT. Can they? Can the Peruvians actually have a flawless run into the Grand Finals? They flawless. They did lose one game in their first round. But they're off to a cracker of a start here in game number one. Stay tuned. We'll be back for game number two in just a moment. For our winner's bracket final for the D2CL North American Qualifier. The winner goes to DreamHack Bucharest. And I would really actually love to see a Peruvian team make their way down there. But will it happen? Stay